right, guys. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Practical Wealth Show. So today, I'm going to pose you the question, and 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 we're going to answer why franchising is an investment strategy. So I have a special guest today, Marty Greenbaum, who is a 30 year veteran in this space and an owner of uh, uh, Smart Franchising. And he teaches people all about that and how to get themselves into it. Marty, I'm not going to bore them reading something. I'm going to let you tell them about yourself. Marty, welcome to the Practical Wealth Show. Curtis, thanks so much. I'm excited to be on with you today. I appreciate it. Hey, listen, I um, I love franchising. My family started a franchise called PostNet years ago, we grew it internationally. I opened up hundreds of stores. And then I uh, started a franchise marketing company, worked with brands like uh, Ben and & Jerry's and Smoothie King and Hertz Rent-A-Car and Meineke, Mako, Famous Dave's, Fast Signs. Uh, probably had over 125 different franchisors that I helped through the years. Big part of the industry. I'm a certified franchise executive. But mm-hmm. today, I um, what I do is I help people. I help people look at franchising as an investment strategy and I help them understand, you know, what what do you need to know? You know, what could be a good fit? So a lot of people, you know, they hear about franchising and they, they think of, you know, brands like, you know, big brands like McDonald's, of course, you know, Chick-fil-A, you know, certain brands come to mind. But right. in actuality, they're just franchising is big, but you got to kind of know what's out there. And, you, you know, so that's kind of my background. Okay. All right. So let's, let's, let's go into it. Cause what I want to do is I want them to think about that. And so let's start with, I'll start with basic question. What is franchising? And in your opinion, why would you consider it over opening a, cause everybody just wants to start something, right? Why would you consider right. it of over, over opening an independent business? Uh, good question. Good question. Well, first of all, you know, Um, I think everybody who kind of knows a little bit about franchising, you know, one of the obvious things is people know these brands and they trust the brands, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you, you come in contact with different franchises through the years and you know what, you, you understand what you're going to get as a customer. So that there's that, what I call brand power. But aside from that, I want you to understand that, you know, franchises, not, you know, there's basically close to 4,000 franchises in the U.S. So there's so many different franchises, wow. you know, mm-hmm. and the reason why you would look at this model compared to opening your own business, first of all, about 80% of small businesses never make it to the five-year mark. So yeah, right. opening a business well, eight, is 80%. Not, yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. You know, but that, that's all kinds of people getting into business from, you know, somebody opening up a, you know, power washing company to opening up, you know, even bigger businesses and retail locations. But yes, independent businesses fail because people don't realize what it's going to take to get into a business and launch it. And, you know, if you're an independent, you're reinventing the wheel, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, unless you've been working for that type of industry for a long time, most people, they don't know what it's going to take, how much it's going to take. It ends up being more than they expected. And unfortunately, that they get hurt. You know, and, uh, you know, franchising, in contrast to independent, you know, think about this. If you had a franchise and they have 300 locations and they've been around for 20 years and, you know, they have distilled what I call distilled down their business model, right, right, to the most effective model. They train you. They support you. They've got great technology. They got great marketing, right? Right. So even though you may not have had that industry experience, like 75% of the people that get into a franchise, they never had that industry experience. But what they have is they've, you know, been in business, they've managed people, maybe they have some sales background, maybe they're more ops people, but there's different franchises for different attributes. And the fact is, is that, you know, franchising succeeds because not only do you have a franchise organization who's, by the way, you know, and we'll get into this a little bit, you know, they make their money from royalties, okay? So if you're making your money from royalties, then you're going to make sure your franchisees are successful, right? right? So they have a vested interest also. 
So all that combined, you know, I hope they gave a little bit, you know, better understanding of franchising, but really franchises use other people's money to right. expand. And those, and you as a franchise owner, like you have rights to a specific territory in your market, right? And you've probably heard stories of somebody owning five of this or 10 of that. I mean, so as an investment in building wealth, it's a pretty neat thing. But again, not every franchise is great. I, you know, so I was a basketball player in college, but I'll look at like Shaq or some of these people and they own like, hundred, you know, total, but like <laughs> 25 from here and 20. So it's definitely a, a part of their diversified strategy. Most people think of, you know, McDonald's or Burger King, but right. I've, I, personally, I'm not a big fan of the restaurant business, right? So that would be a no go for, for me. And there's all kinds of non food stuff, but uh, you know, so I want to talk about the types you run into, but in your opinion, so you've been doing this a long time. Who is a good candidate for this? Like, out there listening to this show and say, well, is this something I should be considering? Who's a good candidate for franchise? Well, listen, um, I think if you had some business experience, if you have a reasonable amount of money, you know, if you're driven, right? Those mm -hmm. are core things, right? So the fact is, is like, I like to bring up like different scenarios because I think it'll help people to see hey, is this me? Think about it. You know, a lot of people that I work with is, you know, they've been in a job for, you know, 20 years in a career, whether it's with the same company or another, you know, been jumping around a little bit. But as we get older, you know, I'm going to be actually 60 in less than two weeks. And, um, and the fact is, is like, you know, if you lose your job and you're in your upper 50s or close to 60 or even a little past that, it's like, who wants to go try to find another job, right? right. So a great right. reason is a lot of people, they're saying, hey, I want to kind of retire, but I don't want to sit around and do nothing. Is there a semi-absentee franchise that I could actually grow something and maybe have a manager in there and I'm making money and I'm, you know, I'm supplementing my income? You know, that's one thing. And then I have other people that say, you know what? It would be great to actually grow that to three units or five units. Maybe they got kids that they want to hand something down to, right? right. And get right. involved. I mean, you get a, you get someone in the early 20s involved in a business and, and have your son right there with you or daughter. I mean, that's a great opportunity. It's a great reason to, you know, help them understand business. Um, so those reasons, you know, people get into it because, you know, obviously there's some big players that really want to build wealth. And it's amazing. Like there's so many different franchises, you know, and, and I, you know, definitely understand their, what I'm going to call unit performance, like how much money could you make? Right. Mm -hmm. But again, mm -hmm. it comes down to finding being, you know, finding the right fit for you and, right. and being in a business where the franchisor really provides value. Right. So, um, because not all franchisors are created equal. Right. I like that. I think that like, for a person, let's say they've been in corporate and they still need, this is how I see it in my mind. They still, they want to be in business, but they need structure. Like they need a coach, they need structure. So their business, they're professional, but, and they can follow a game plan, but they don't have a game plan. And again, they don't want to go back to work. And, uh, you know, so you can decide how you want to be an operator. You want to be how, how involved do you want to be? Whereas a good, consultant like you can kind of match up it seems like you're kind of like a matchmaker matching their um yeah personality yeah. With, the, with the business that do it know, every day my friend do it every day yeah. i love it so yeah, yeah the, the key is the key is that you know that you know these franchises they're they've got you know very intense training and and you know they have um not only do you train at corporate but they got field reps come out, feel, you know, and, and train you in the field and train your employees. There's so much technology built into franchising nowadays. It's kind of amazing once you look into it, you know, so um, somebody who has, you know, decent amount of skills could actually start looking at growing something for themselves. And, and that's, you know, keep in mind, you know, we're talking um, freedom. All right. So the, that whole thought about like, Hey, 
you know, I could be free. I could get to the point where I could, you know, if I need to take a vacation or want to take a vacation and be away for even a month, you know, you could set yourself up for that. Right. Right. But you got to be you got to do that with intent. Right. So that's the um, purpose of being in business really is to you don't want to just own a job. You want to be financially free. So I think that if you, you if you got a business that works, that's the first thing you got to build a business that works so you don't have to work all the time. Right. Right. And that's I, and I think they're kind of hand you the keys to that as long as you don't get creative and try to screw it up. Right. It creative in a bad way. Right. And well, they all got their brand standards. Right. Because yeah. they're protecting the brand. So if somebody walks into one of these locations that, you know, if they order something, they know they're going to get, you know, they they have an understanding They you know, obviously we could use the big brands. You get a Big Mac, you know what you're going to get. You know, right. there's a certain customer experience. There's a certain level of service. There's a certain quality of the product, you know, and that's, you know, that's the value in the, in the brand power. But, you know, they, they do have some drawbacks a little bit like, you know, you're going to have a territory you got to work within and that, you know, varies by the type of brand, you know, right. obviously right. a restaurant you're talking, you're going to have a territory around the store, maybe a three mile radius. All right. It varies. But in a service company, you're going to have a set number of, you know, zip codes. But here's what's happening. And it's big services big right now. You know, in the service industry, what they do is they give you a certain area. But if you're smart, you go in and you say, I, I know I'm going to want to expand this. So you could actually do a, a multi-unit deal where maybe you, you know, um, get into three units, knowing that you're going to start with one territory and grow, yeah. but you want to reserve those other two territories. So that's a, that's a lot of detail. We don't need to jump too far into, but there's definitely a lot to but think that's, about. That's a good thought, that. see, because a lot of people aren't strategic like that. You know, if you, if you, you know, because you can, you can say, oh, I like this. I can do this because, see, once you get the other one up and going, the other ones are easier because you kind of know what you're doing now. And so, you know, I always tell people as you're, uh, we teach our clients, Marty, as, as your knowledge goes up, your risk comes down. Right. And they already take away a lot of the risk because they've given you're it's not like you're making it up, it's a proven model. So <laughs> think about this. So we started this. I want to go back to the title, right? So and we started this talking about this as an investment opportunity. So why, in your opinion, is franchising a good investment strategy? What kind of returns can they expect? So let me give you a scenario to help you understand. Okay. So I'm gonna take, and I just want to use, you know. Um, and this is a kind of a real life experience, you know, example. All right. Let's talk. You know what an acai bowl is like the smoothie shops and the, yes. now they're yeah. bowl uh -huh. shops, acai bowls. They're all hey, over the place. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They're, they're, they're healthy. They're gluten-free, dairy-free. Right. So you can open up one of those stores for 350. Okay. So 350. Now, would you put down 350 in cash? Definitely not. Okay. Would you probably use a hundred of your own money? Yeah. So let's say you have an investment, a hard investment of a hundred and you're, you have 250 you're going to finance. Okay. And that could be either financing through an SBA loan. Some people actually use their 401k. There's a thing called the 401k rollover or ROBS where you could use 401k money to invest in a business. It's just like investing in stock or real estate or anything else. Right. So, but let's say you have the hundred investment, okay? Those stores can do, let's say, now I've seen them do as high as 1.2 in revenue, 1.2 million, but let's mm -hmm. say they do like 800,000 would not be out of this, you know, crazy number for them okay. to gross revenue, right? Semi-absentee business, simple business model. You don't have to, it's not like your typical restaurant. There's, you know, but you could net 20 to 22%. So let's say a business does a 800,000, you're netting 20%, right? That's 160, okay? You invest 100. Now, it may, you're not gonna get there the first year. It's gotta grow a little bit, but let's right. say you know you, you slowly grow to that number and let definitely by year three, you should be able to get there. So let's say you know year two, you do a little bit less, but listen, you invested 100, in cash, you're making 160 now, you know, and I don't know of any traditional, many traditional investments where you're going to see those numbers, 
right? Now, what if you got three stores going, right? You could be managing the managers, checking in with them, right? And that's not a bad lifestyle, right? If, if you right. left corporate right. America, you get into three units. Um, and so that's, that's, yeah, I, I mean, that's, that's, that's almost $10 million dollars of revenue off a, a year, right? For, I'm talking like if it's 800,000, you're making 20%, that's 160. So right, you times invest, three. Well, I'm right? saying time, I was adding it up my mind. I was already times three. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And, uh, uh, over, you know, so let's see you do that over five years, but that is a tremendous ROI. Yeah, and you can't find that. And yes, you're going to have to work somewhat. It's not passive, right? But, you know, there are some good models. Already, there ain't no such thing as passive. Right, <laughs> right. You know? So people, I want passive income. Passive is a, I tell people, a tax term, right? You're going to work. My dad used to say, look, if you make a hundred grand a year, someone, you're going to have to work. Nobody's going to, give you that right you're gonna have to right. do some stuff even the work to be in business you kind of got to transform yourself so that's some work you know so just when you come in with the proper expectation you i grew up in retail you know one of the things my dad said listen you gotta your store's gotta be open and you've got to get up you gotta open the store now you don't have to because you got the franchise but you gotta you know make well, you sure that manager. Everything- you hire a manager yeah. but in hire something- manager. Yeah, in that scenario, you could hire a nice 28-year-old manager that could handle that type of scenario that's not going to be that tough. And you have a couple, you know, an assistant manager, backup person. But, you know, there's all kinds of investments too, you know. I mean, that's, like I said, 350 right? Yeah. But yeah. you could get into a service franchise for like 100 to 200 right? A lot of them are around 125 to 150 where you're coming in maybe with 50 cash. What, what, like what? Like what? A million types of service companies. Senior care is really hot right now because we have an aging population. All yeah. the various home services are extremely hot right now, right? There's this one where, check this out, I love it. You know, they have, um, they do the installation of flooring. They don't have a showroom. They don't sell the flooring. They do the installation of flooring, Okay. And, and it's amazing because the investment's like $100,000 and the opportunity is you can make three dollars $400,000 a year in this business. Plus, wow. Wow. it's crazy. I mean, they have all the marketing, they have call centers nowadays with the, uh, you know, with technology and everything. And most of the service companies, you know, um, have call centers. And I'll be honest with you, you know. Real estate is hot. Fixing their homes up is, you know, hot. Like I have um, a client looking at one of the blinds franchise, right? You know, mm-hmm. people need window covering and blinds, right. you know, they generate the leads for you. Yeah. I mean, there's some amazing franchises. And, you know, when you compare that against like a, if you were to, you could say to yourself, well, there's a million companies doing blinds, right? Just like painting franchise. There's a million people doing painting, but right. If the national franchise could get you to rank up there first, second, or third, and typically first, okay, then it's about, it's not that everybody's doing it. It's, you know, when people are looking online and they come across you and they call up that number and you've got someone on the call center that's great, that knows how to schedule and convert those calls, guess what? You're going to have a pretty solid business because the demand is there. Right. And you're going to outdo most of the mom and pops out there. Right, because so. they don't know. Most mom and pops don't couldn't market their way out of a paper bag, let alone right. have the and, call center and the infrastructure. And right, yeah, that's major. That's major. Yeah. What? Let me ask you this: What does due diligence look like when you're investigating? For, like, right, the, yeah. So at it, you were helping me look at that. What does what does due diligence look like on a, on a Well, you said that? something. You said something a, a moment ago. You know about you know. Um, Reducing risk, right? Reducing risk, risk, you know, if you do the right due diligence, you could really bring down risk big time, okay? So listen, first of all, here's a mistake a lot of people make in looking at franchises, all right? And some of these that have closed down because people, you know, people get excited, they go online and they start searching for franchises and typically they look at things that they know. 
you know, right. or I heard a buddy of mine said, you know, the roofing business is great. So I'm going to go find some roofing franchises and then they reach out and, you know, they get a million calls back if they, it's crazy. Once you get on a list for franchises, it's crazy. You're going to get a million calls, right? Yeah. So they get, they basically get sold the franchise. All right. And, you know, listen, franchises, many of them are really good. And then there's some that, you know, a little more questionable, you know, not all. I think there's a lot of great ones. All right. Listen, I've been in the franchising industry 30 years. Um, I've really get, taken the time to get to know the franchises, you know, these franchises and what their capabilities are, what reputation they have, what level of success they have, you know, and the fact is, is one of the things that I would say, and I, you know, not just it's, 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 it's really makes a great deal of sense is get help, whether it's me or someone else get help. But that's number one, number two, right? Big thing. You're going to talk to franchisees. Let's say I was going to buy one of these franchises. I would want to reach out to as many franchises that I could. Now I had a client that just basically bought into a technology franchise. He reached out to 28 franchise owners to get their experience. I mean, 28, I mean, it was the most I've ever heard. You know, usually right. five, 10 would be great, right? You get a pretty good idea at five or 10. This guy talked to 28, good for him, all right? He's smart. The other thing is, is like, you know, make sure there's a skill match, you know? Right. Find out what their best performers are, what they need to be, you know, is it sales, is it operations? Like, is a guy like me gonna be successful in this business? And let's make sure there's that match of skills or background, you know, that's important, right? Right. I like to also understand like a customer's perspective. I wanna know what the customer is thinking about, you know, the brand and, you know, is this service something that's going to stand the test of time or is it a fad, right? Or is it recession proof, right? So there's a lot of thoughts. So, you know, in your due diligence, you're going to go talk to the, talk to customers. I would go to a store and spend some time there if I could. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would, you know, they have a franchise disclosure document, by the way, every mm -hmm. franchise by law, the federal trade commission requires franchises to provide you with a franchise disclosure document. So there's going to be a lot of numbers and data, performance data and everything in that. You have to definitely read through that. And if you buy a franchise, I would have an attorney help you with, you know, understand that document in the franchise agreement. So there's a number of things, but, you know, matching you, determining which franchises could be a good fit for you. You know, guys like me, that's what we do. All right. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of ways to mitigate risk. And I hope that, you know, was helpful. Yes. Yes. So are there, I want to, matter of fact, let me go back here real quick. I had another question, but so you talk about the franchise disclosure document. So they, I think that's can be overwhelming because most people don't, it's like, you know, don't know how to read that stuff. They don't read detail. They're excited. Um, could you explain the importance and how you guide people through understanding them? Is that part of what you're right? Yeah, I do. I do. You? Yeah. So, so imagine this, um, you know, it is, it's a two, 300 page document. Okay. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it, for, for anybody who's been in business or been in, in a, in, in a professional position, I mean, it's not that hard to understand. There's going to be some legal ease that if you decide to move forward, you know, I, I usually recommend some attorneys that, you know, help my clients, you know, make sure they fully understand. So let me explain what's in there more specifically, right? So number one, there's a breakdown of like, here's the leadership and here's their background. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it tells you is, have they had any lawsuits, litigation against them? Right. If, right. if you were going to buy a franchise and they had a bunch of pending you know, litigation, I don't think I'd want to do that. Right. Exactly. No. <laughs> also, it, it shares like, you know, have they had many closures and why? Right. Um, it has a breakdown line item by line item of the investment range. Right. So you'll be able to see like if there's an investment of that smoothie shop of 350. Right. Now you pay a franchise fee when you get into a franchise of $50,000, but everything past that, let's say that other 300, 
that's all that you know that's the build out of the store that's your signs that's your marketing you know there's some working capital figured into that so they give you a breakdown you know you so if it's you know most of them you'll say it's 300 or 400,000 on average mm -hmm. let's say I, I use 350 but here's how that breaks down because if you buy 1200 if you find a 1200 square foot unit it's going to cost more to build that out than a thousand right? right so right. costs vary from state to state contractor costs vary right so so in addition to those things like in the FPD, what's your responsibility as a franchisee? What's the franchisor's responsibility? They also have unit performance, item 19. Like, mm -hmm. what can I make? So in that section, you could understand what other stores are doing. Again, I go back to that. If you have a franchise that, you know, there's 300, 500 locations, and they're doing, on average, 1.2 million, and you know, you know, and basically it shows that they have an average net profit of X, then, you know, if you feel somewhat confident in your ability that, you know, hey, I'm not gonna, you know, I'll definitely be in that average range. I don't see myself being, you know, an underperformer. So right. now you kind of know where, where, where you could take this model. Again, you take that as you, you look at being an independent in the same business and you'll go in and you'll struggle because you, you got no one to train you. You got no one, you know, you don't have those resources, right. technology, marketing, and so on. Because people run out of money. You know, I heard the SBA, you know, most people don't, they fail to understand the market they're in. So they don't know how to market their thing. And then when they start to get it, they run out of money. <laughs> okay. And so well, listen, not, you brought up a, a very business. important point. Yeah. You brought up a very important point that I caution my clients on. Okay. Franchise initial investments, let's take it, and it was three to 400, right? For that mm -hmm. example. Yeah. So I would ask the franchisor and the franchise owners that you talk to, how long did it take to get to break even? Because mostly in the franchise disclosure document, they're going to include 90 days of working capital. Okay. Now, if you found out that it takes nine months to break even, okay, then the next question is, well, how much did you spend between month, you know, the end of month three to month to break even? Because I need to make sure that I have that money too, right? Right. So, right. so you have to have the appropriate working capital, and and you know, a lot of people they don't, if, if, you know, they don't know to ask that question and right. to validate that with the franchisees. But I make sure my that's, clients. Do. That's major. I think. Yeah. I mean, if you don't like you, you don't know. You only know what you know. So if you can't. Right. Uh, yeah, you just may you know, not know to ask you have that. any questions. Well, you don't even know to ask that question, you know. And so that's where you need somebody with you to kind of guide you through this. I think so I'm gonna come back to so what you're doing. Yeah, I'll tell you, I have a document I give my clients. I'm happy to give anybody who reaches out to me. It's 101 great questions to ask a franchisor Ooh. before you buy. Okay. So, and it's broken down based on the different areas of the business, you know, whether it be related to real estate, related to operations, related to marketing, uh, you know, I make sure my clients understand what they need to be, you know, asking. Oh, yeah, we'd love that. That That's awesome. Let me ask you, I have a final question, and then I want you to kind of tell them how to get in touch with you. Are there certain brands, I, I guess I would say, that are more recession proof than others? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. You know, that's a bigger concern. Um, and uh, I'll tell you, here's the thing I'll, I'll share with you some, you know, listen, if my if my drain in my, you know, one of my drains or uh, systems get, you know, if I if, if something breaks in my house. I'm going to call I'm going to get that service. Right. Right. Of course, like if my sewer backs up or my drains get clogged. There's a great franchise for that, right? If my car breaks down and 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 like I need to get it fixed, you know, will, will I still go to Meineke or Midas to get it fixed? Yeah, I'm gonna still do that. So automotive, great. Home services right now, fantastic, especially repair. But even things like restoration, you've seen these commercials, you know, uh, like it never happened, right? You know, somebody has a flood, a pipe breaks, it, you know, it drips right. down through the ceiling and wrecks right. the floor and whatever, you know. Um, so those so home services, great. 
Um, another one is healthcare, right? So there's a number of healthcare uh, franchises, and you don't have to be a doctor to get into a healthcare. You know, I think I brought senior yeah, care. I, you know, I never even thought about senior care or healthcare as a franchise like that's Oh yeah. Do, do you say you said that before? I was like, really? And yeah. uh, so yeah. that's like there's that's a mental thing. health franchise. Think about yeah. it. Right now in our country, we've got so much turmoil and between the kids all kind of screwed up with that, you know, COVID break and, you know, and, and concerns over addiction and family issues over jobs and this and that, like mental health is, a, is you know, and then we have like physical therapy. We have an aging population. So there's a great physical therapy and like balance uh, franchise. And there, so there's so many different, you know, recession resistant franchises, right? So, um, yeah, again, yeah. Uh, there, the that's, list goes on. That's, yeah, yeah. And so, so tell, tell our listeners, how specifically do you help people with franchising? Tell them what you do. Well, thank You've you. You've been calling them, but tell them. <laughs> <laughs> so let me start with this, okay? I don't charge people for what I do, and it may sound silly, but you'll get it. All right. So think about like how I work with people. Here's what I do. I educate them about franchising. I help them uh, really as a matchmaker, helping them find the right franchise for them. And um, I'm here to consult them along the way because, you know, if, if they're speaking with a franchisor and they hear some things like most people that haven't been in this space, they don't know, you know, like if somebody tells you something, if you don't have the context, to, I know the playing field, the franchising. So if right. you hear something, I'm going to be able to kind of make it more relatable and say, well, in generally in that type of a franchise, this is what you could expect. But, yeah. you know, basically, I like I said, I don't charge people. If, if I help someone into a franchise, then I receive a referral commission from the franchise company, they all pay about the same and it doesn't affect what you pay. So I'm here to A, educate you, B, I have this great process I've developed to make sure that we find franchises that make sense for you. And, uh, and then I'm there to help them along and make sure that they're doing the right due diligence, they're checking off those boxes. I don't, I don't, like, I don't believe in pressuring people, right? Mm -hmm. This is a big decision, mm -hmm. all right? This is a big decision. You have to go into it eyes wide open and it's a great investment. Okay. But it could be a bad investment too. And that's why just like a lot of people, they need help, you know, understanding investments. This is, this is why I do what I do. I want people to succeed. Right. That's awesome. I mean, you, because you, if you've got somebody that's going to do all this with you and you don't have to pay them, why would you not use them? Okay. And uh, <laughs> I, know. You know, I don't, I don't get that because, you know, you need to help you wade through this whole thing. You've not been in business. You don't know how to read a document. You don't know how it works. And um, what about the other thing you say? You don't want to buy a pig and a poke. <laughs> this is right. And uh, you got to be that, careful. Yeah. You, you got to be, be careful, careful. because right. it's a big deal and you're putting out, six figures of money. So you want to make sure that you're going to get, um, you know, because you, one of the things that Marta, we say to invest means to cover fully. Right. So it was right. short for investigate. And so right. that's what we're talking about is investigating this opportunity. Uh, but you know, I always tell people business is your fastest path to cash. It's a little more complex, but if you can get something where they've taken that stuff, a lot of the, figuring out how the business works out of you, then it could be a really good opportunity for, for people. Right. Um, Marty, tell them, first of all, is anything I didn't ask you, this is my catch all, make sure I didn't mess up, that that, that uh, you want to say or get out that that you think it would be important? Well, I, I want to bring this out because it's kind of, you know, I, 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 I actually talked to my clients about this. I'll mm -hmm. share it with you, okay? Fear. Yes. People, it's so funny, you know, you look at, you know, certain people and that they've succeeded and they're, they've gotten there and, you know, and here's the problem. Fear gets in the way from, of a lot of good decisions. Okay. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. I just say, you know, what I want people to understand is like, listen, when you're working with me, there's no pressure. You're learning 
about franchising. You're exploring franchising. Now, if I connect you with a franchise after we go through and have a few meetings and we determine what franchises are good for you, then you're going to be able to talk to franchise companies and, you know, we're going to keep in light touch. But the fact is, until you sign a franchise agreement, there is nothing to fear. So what I say to people, I say, listen, this is something worth exploring, right? Because we talked about that, you know, opportunity from a number, you know, numbers and profitability standpoint, you right. know, and this is worth exploring, but don't let fear get in the way of you progressing in your life and really reaching the goals. Because listen, we go down this path in life, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes, or most of the time, you didn't really pick the path you're fully on. Life circumstances put you on a path and sometimes you veer off this way or that way because certain things came about. But the fact is, is like here you, if you're in your 50s or close to 60 or even into your 60s, you got to be more intentional about like if I'm not, if I'm on a path that's not going to get me to the financial security for me and my family that I want to get to, then how can I get on that right path, right? So don't let fear get in the way of that. Be smart, investigate it. You know, it may not, franchising may not be for you, but listen, it may be for you. And, and we may find a franchise you never expected that you love and you have a passion for. That's, you know, so that's, that's what exactly. I want people to understand. Well, well the, what's the acronym for fear? False evidence appearing real. Right. right. And uh, so don't let fear stop you. A lot of times, see, uh, one of the things, I, you know, when I work, Marty, with financial clients, they don't really, people don't really understand, you know, you don't have a choice. Like you need to do something that makes cash flow, right? Because if you, let's say you had a million dollars in a, in, a, in a 401k, well, at the, you know, they call it a safe withdrawal rate. That's like $40,000 a year. So you're making 120, you're just a little bit short. Like that money is not going to last you. So if you could do the Rob thing or, or buy an asset that sends you a check, that is your best alternative. And, and um, keep in mind, you're still building the asset and you could sell that asset for, yeah. for, you know, usually three to, you know, around three times multiple of revenues. Yeah. So if you're netting 150 from a from a store, you could probably sell for at least minimally two, but maybe as high as three times multiple. Wow. Yeah. And or you can bring your kids into the business. I mean, it's all right. kinds of stuff. So you want to you always tell people our tax system is designed for landowners and business owners, right? So you want to get yourself what I call on to the right side of the game, you know, on the or the and if you have to right. quote Kiyosaki, the left side of the cash flow quadrant, the BI side of the cash flow quadrant. So that's it. So Marty, how can our listeners get in touch with you if they want to find out, you know, more about franchising and what you're, what, you know, what you're right. doing and how you can help them? What's, what's the best way to do that? Well, first of all, my website, smart franchise investing, smart franchise investing.com. Mm -hmm. Right. And you can email me directly, Marty at smart franchise investing. Okay. So Marty at smartfranchiseinvesting.com. Uh, love to hear from any of your audience that, you know, want to do a little brainstorming and kind of been thinking, you know, about franchising. I'm happy to help. Okay. How would they get that book? Is it on the site or, or is that? Um, there are some free resources on the site. I believe it's in under resources and smart franchise okay. investing. There's a pop-up that comes up with another book, which is just as good. The, I, um, the ultimate franchise buyer's guide. All right. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Um, that's also great. And it has uh, much of the same content, but definitely if you reach out to me, I'm happy to send you both. Uh, but there's a number of resources on the site. Okay. All right, Marty, listen, thank you so much for uh, breaking this down for our listeners. I think this is, is uh, definitely something guys, as you're looking at where to deploy your capital and stuff to do, I think he's laid out a good blueprint for you to maybe consider this for the right people. Everything's not for everybody. Cause I always tell people investing is becoming right. Not about buying something. So it's not, I always tell people, it's not our job to tell you what to become, but what I want to do is lay out here are opportunities for you to research. And I've got you a great person that you should reach out to. If you decide like, Hey, I think I'm curious about this. Reach out to Marty Greenbaum. All right. Thank you. So thank you guys for, uh, uh, this has been another exciting episode. 
and um, reach out, get some information, see if this is for you, Marty. And, and so if you like this and you know somebody that's interested in share it, don't keep us a secret, share it with somebody that could benefit from listening to us, leave us a review and uh, go out there and make it a profitable day. Thanks, Marty, again. Thank you.